Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another and a special edition of the Unprofessional Breakdown. And I got two of my, my homies from 20 plus years, man. Uh, Manny Sanchez, a.k.a. Fit with Manny Inc. Download that app and I got Daniel Placeres. My man got eight wins. Seven out of those wins are KOs. Three defeats. It's all good. I got a defeat and one draw, which is questionable. But um, right to it, man. <laughs> two of my homies right here. Canelo versus Saunders. Yo, Manny, let me hear your thoughts on on that fight. Uh, for, I was finished talking with Danny. Uh, first of all, man, I got to say the crowd made the difference. Um, it was good to see the entrance was big. The whole the whole event, the stadium was crazy from TV, you know. Um, but I think the first round, the first round was a big filling out, a big filling out for for um, Canelo. Which was uh pretty good, and um I think uh Phil Saunders was working that jab really well, and then he found in the in the middle rounds he was finding a spot for it, and he was moving, and then obviously you know what happened, he kept leaning to the left, I think he kept leaning to the left, and then Canelo just caught him with that big that big right uppercut and timed it so well after after a hook, I, I believe it was a hook, he faded out the look and got him with a big uppercut, and just I think Canelo also fell him break his his cheek too. Canelo felt that yeah. he said he's like he broke his cheek, and he knew it was over. And um, and ain't no man. After, I knew after that round when he started like telling the crowd to start getting loud. I'm like, yo, this man is not losing. Even if the fight went on and that 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 he didn't break his audible bone, I knew that fight was done. Like it was done. Like ain't, ain't nobody beating that man. We got like what 175,000 Mexicans screaming your name and for you. Like, nobody. He ain't losing, man. <laughs> he is not. <laughs> So either way, so, either how you see it, he Canelo, I see Canelo winning, but he won with a big shot, and that was no lucky shot. That was a, that was a shot he does all the time. Yeah, he he definitely drilled that shot, and he does that rear that rear uppercut, man. And I guess, and to you, Danny, tell me your thoughts. But you being a southpaw, right? Um, you being a southpaw, and I guess that's normal for for southpaws to jab, and when they jab, they tend to they tend to jab and kind of lean. In right. like if they're going for right. like right. a jab to the, the body right. as well, right. so that's a perfect um, counter for you guys, right? That's like your is that one of your kryptonites other than the straight down the middle, the straight right down the middle? I mean, yes. I mean, some some left handed fighters uh, like walking to the right hand because you know that it's coming, so you could kind of skip it and throw your left hand. So it depends, you know, what type of fighter and what type of temperament. Um, to touch base on on the fight and to have been there, it was great to watch an icon. Uh, a Mexican uh, that has transcended the sport, you know, um, he is this era's Julio Cesar Chavez. That's who he is of, of this era, and it was it was amazing to witness him, his greatness because that, that's what it was. And he didn't fight no slouch; like he fought a good fighter, and it was a competitive fight till he landed that, you know, that devastating punch which broke his orbital bone or fractured it. Yeah, he fractured the orbital bone and. That Canelo is Julio Cesar Chavez is one of my favorite fighters of all time, and I say it all the time. I'm Puerto Rican, but damn it, Julio Cesar Chavez. Growing up, watching him fight, the way he fights, and you know what? That's a I'm not gonna say that's a, a great comparison because I'm biased, man. I love uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, but I can see his stigma, right? Canelo's stigma, you know, his just aura right now of a destructor. I can see that for some people to to think that. But he's just on, he's on a, he's, I think he's a better boxer than, than Chavez. Chavez just destroyed you and he broke you down. Canelo was breaking down Saunders and you're right, Manny. He was landing those jabs and he was even tripling and doubling the jabs at one point. But, you know, Canelo knew when he said it, he said, I'm going to stop him in the late rounds. I know that I'm going to stop him in the late rounds. And he just believed in himself. And I guess when you believe in yourself and you're that confident in your hands and your power, you know, what, what's going to stop you? So my question to you guys is, what, what do you guys think is next? You know, being boxing fans, like big boxing fans, what's next for Canelo? He's going to fight Caleb Plant, um, Caleb Plant. Do you see him running through Caleb? You know, Caleb is a, he, he's a good fighter, man. I think him and Billy Joe are kind of identical, right? Caleb may have more heart than Billy, um, than Billy Saunders, but do you see him going through Caleb? Do you see him going up to 173? 173 pounds? Danny? Uh, it should be 175, but 
173, 175. No, but, 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 wait, no, no, but, but Caleb Plant is uh, the 168 champion, is the only belt that he's missing. So they're trying yeah. to fight for the undisputed. So it will be yeah. at 168. But are you saying that do you, do you see Canelo moving up in weight, like to 175? Yeah, so I guess we'll start with you, Danny. Do you see him running through Caleb um, Plant and then going up to 173 or 175 division? Or what, what, do you, what do you think is the next two steps for... He's fighting so, Plant for, to unify the belts. That's for sure. Right. So, and then we so go to you, goal, Manny. Yeah, his goal is to be the undisputed... The first Mexican undisputed champion in 168 pounds, which I think he will accomplish. Um, I think uh, Caleb Plant um, is a good boxer. He, he, he's going to come to fight. But at the, at, at the end of the day, Canelo is just a level above these guys, and he's proven it. He, his resume speaks for itself. He is a Hall of Famer. You know, um, a lot of people like to discredit him, um, but he's going to be the undisputed champion, 168. I see him then moving down to 154. I don't see him going back down to world to weight because that would be a, a dramatic change to his body. So I see him competing at 154, maybe a future fight where Errol Spence at the AT&T Stadium. That's going to be another huge fight. What do you think, Manny? Same question. I want to see him fight Errol Spence. Um, obviously, I want to see... Errol Spence fight Crawford too, but uh, I want to see one. Definitely, I def I don't I don't know much to be honest. I don't know much about Caleb Plant. I just know he's a big, tall dude, and we saw that before with Canelo was two fights ago against the Brit, I believe, and um with taller fighters. And I just I just don't see anybody beating beating him like that on um, with a record. I know he's good, but I see I want to see Errol Spence or the Charlo brothers, just like you said, to fight. To fight Canelo, and we don't we don't see. It. I don't know why, but I get upset when I don't I don't hear about that. He fights all these Brits, um, but I I don't see him fighting anybody. Yeah, in the U.S. mostly. What do you Why do you think that is, Danny? Is it Is it um? I think the mission now is him to be the Thanos of 168 pounds, right, and collect all the but belts. He, yeah, he has one one more ring to collect. Um, like I said previously. I think it's going to not be an easy fight, but I think that you will see kind of a same event here that, that you saw with the Billy Joe Saunders. I think he stops him nine times round. Um, he breaks Caleb. him down. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll break uh, Caleb down, and um, he should stop him like in the ninth or tenth round. I, um, Caleb has no punching power. So, by you know, he after the sixth round, he'll start walking you down because you got nothing to for him to be a sca a scared of, you know? So, yeah. that's... So th that's what I see happening um, with Canelo and then that fight. Um, and again, he's going to be the next Mexican undisputed 168, the first Mexican to do that. And it's great, man. It's good. It's good to witness history and to see greatness happening right before your eyes and in our generation, you know? Yeah, man. Um, I, I think um, Canelo is just special. He's he's an actual boxer. You know, most of these guys like going back to Chavez, you know, Chavez was you know, he, he just broke you down and destroyed you. Um, Pernell Whitaker had the, the best defense next to James Tony and Roy Jones in the 90s, right, in the lighter weights. But he didn't have a lot of power. Um, Meldrick Taylor, another one, defensive fighter, you know, um, had decent power, right? You know, Trinidad, not a great boxer per se, but he had that damn hook, that left hook every, um, in the fourth round when his dad slapped him. You already know. <laughs> you already know it was time. Um, Tito, you know, the, Tito, yeah. Tito. <laughs> and my man Riddick Bowe in the heavyweight division. Riddick Bowe was throwing mm -hmm. down. You know, Riddick Bowe was a slick boxer. He was a slick boxer and he had heavy hands, but most of the guys in the heavyweight division does. Uh, they do as well. But um, Canelo is just special to see, man. I, I really enjoy watching, watching him fight. What do you guys think, though, of this? I was just having this conversation with, with one of my good friends who's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, shout out to L. Um, Canelo now. Fighting Mayweather oh, at no. his prime. Nah, he'll I, he'll be he'll definitely be Mayweather. I would see, yeah. Canelo you think win. so? I would I would say. Why, what, make, what makes you think that, Benny? Go in uh, details, man. Specify. Man, to be honest, I just <clears> he he's a way better. He's way better. He's more experienced. You know what I'm saying? So he could, like his timing is different now. His timing, his accuracy is different. So I just see him just, and he's a. I know I know Mayweather's a counter puncher and plays defense, but. Everybody says, like, oh, all he does is Canelo's attacks. And then next thing you know, he's all right. Only attack. Next thing you know, next fight, his head movement is amazing. And then after that, just now he got like, oh, now the power's on. Now he's over here knocking people out. Like, he's doing everything, like, fight by fight. Whatever they say about him, like, he, 
exceeds it. And then I just, I don't know, man. He just, he's a way better fighter than he was when he fought Mayweather, of course. Danny, what do you think? Um, so here's my take on that. Um, I, I, so when Canelo fought Mayweather, he was 20 years old. Uh, Mayweather was 30. So he was a grown man. He was into his body already. Canelo was a kid, you know? So if Canelo were to fight him today, Canelo would destroy him. I don't think it, it, it would go eight rounds. But so you think they, Canelo, Canelo now, obviously this would be at 147, right? 147 oh, pounds. 154, Canelo now, yeah. 154 or 47? I'll say 54. What do you think Mayweather? Mayweather's smart. You think Mayweather right. wants he, to fight he, him he, at 54? Yeah, but Mayweather wouldn't fight him right now because you know he'll lose. But if they were yeah. both in their prime, if they were both in their, in their prime. prime, I would stick with Mayweather. And this, and here's my reason why. Um, Canelo's, crypt, Canelo's kryptonite is boxing. A boxer that he, you, Billy Joe Saunders proved it. You know what I'm saying? He just, he just got his face broken. <laughs> You know, it was it was gonna be interesting going into the tenth, eleventh, and the twelfth. You know how the fight turned out. Um, you know, um, Billy was peppering him with a jab the whole night, and he was outboxing him. Me personally, being in the stadium, witnessing, witnessing the fight, I had a four four going into the ninth. Um, but I could agree with a five three in Canelo's favor. That's how the fight. But the fight was, you know, pretty close. So going back to that, Mayweather's a master boxer. So if they're both in the prime. Mayweather never lost. I'm going to stick with Mayweather. The money's on Mayweather for that fight. Like, you know, that's who I'll stick with. <laughs> and you know what, man? As much as I, I love Canelo, Canelo's a monster, but Canelo now versus Mayweather at his prime, nobody was touching Mayweather, man. Like, that shoulder mm -hmm. roll. Like, you couldn't, you couldn't figure him out. You know, now, you know, Maybe, think about man. this. Think, think about this, though. The only man to ever hit um, Mayweather hard, like there's two guys, two guys that hit him, hit him real hard, like um, Maidana and Mosley. But Mosley, Mosley, really, that's when we was like, oh my yeah. god. So I mean, there's a chance there, but looking back at it, like on paper, you know, uh, prime Mayweather, prime Canelo. Like Canelo now, I still got Mayweather, man. You but know, who do you still enjoy got watching Mayweather. more? You enjoy watching Mayweather or Canelo? Canelo. They're both Canelo. they're both great. I mean, that's, I mean Canelo because he's Hispanic and it's great to see a Hispanic fighter put yeah. put that on a platform. But yeah. I mean, they were both exciting in their own way. You know, Mayweather was always a villain yeah. and he played that rope, and which we're seeing a lot more of that from Canelo. With the get the fuck out of here, Yo, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he's cussing oh, now. Bro. He's saying bad words now. You know, you know what though? Like to to answer that question correctly, you know me. I I love the fight game, and you both of you guys know that. You know, so I love to watch the sweet science of boxing, like an actual boxer. I mean, think about it. My second favorite fighter of all time is Pernell Whitaker, right? And he was just so swift with it. So I did enjoy watching Mayweather fight, but also shit, I love watching. Pacquiao fight because Pacquiao was just destroying guys you know what I'm saying and uh, and Canelo was um you know Canelo's doing it right now it's just more exciting I think people the masses would rather pay more money to watch Canelo fight than Mayweather fight right mm -hmm. now Mayweather Mayweather the thing I love I love about Mayweather is like he's always smart with his attacks so I think recently a couple of days ago he was comparing the gates yeah Motherfucker had 73,000 people there. You was there, right, Danny? 73,000 people. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and Mayweather was like, yeah, he got 73,000 people, but I still generated more money at the gate. So, you know, he's, I don't know if it's true or not. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, he, at, he the, always at the end of the day, he, he, of course, um, but I mean, Canelo made $35 million and um, he's getting into the field where Mayweather did, where he started off on... Um, uh, which was self-promoting. And that's what Canelo got away from when he broke up with Golden Boy and he actually broke up with the zone. I think he 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 sued both of them. Um so I think he's becoming a more of a more hands-on on his promotion. And bro, as you can see, he could gather masses. That's seventy three thousand. Imagine if he fought yeah. in Mexico City. You're talking about hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hundred thousand oh, stadium. You know, and these are Julio Cesar Chavez numbers. And you, yeah. you know, we're talking about big dollars. So he understands that. I think his next fight uh, will probably be in the UK, maybe. Um, and, like he said, um, who knows? I mean, the O2 Center, he, that's 50,000 people that they're going to pack in there, yeah. you know? So, you know, but the thing I about mean, Canelo, sorry, I didn't mean to over talk. Canelo could fill, bro, any, put him anywhere here in the US. 
the in Miami, put him yeah. in New York, Madison Square Garden, put him in in, in the Brooklyn Nets uh, he's stadium, gonna sell out. um arena. I think he's gonna sell out. He's gonna sell yeah. out, man. And that's uh he's just a name and he's getting to that point. You're right, he's getting to that point money wise, where he's getting what, 35, 40 million a fight without even yeah. in that big ass contract that he had. Now, so he's doing his own thing, right? Because he's still working with um Tyson Fury's uh promoter and and Saunders promoter, right? Because I think he's talking to him to get the the Caleb Plant fight going, right? Right. I mean, they're probably doing business, like um, probably since Eddie Hearn is more uh, familiar with Hearn. the promotional side of, of of the fight, so he's probably like a like what Mayweather was with uh, uh what's his name Al Heyman. They were just you know Al Heyman yeah. has a big connections in the promotion side of it, so he teamed up with him, and that's when he made a lot of money. I think uh, Eddie Hearn is the new Don King. Uh, Bob Arum, he's the of this era. He's the new guy in, in boxing, and he's the man. So if you want to fight, you know he's he's the guy to fight for. Yeah, man. And so Manny, what's what's up with the uh, with the app? How's the app going? And that's, that's uh, fit with good, Manny, man. fit with Manny Inc. Right? Yes, sir. That's uh no, that's my my, that's my Instagram. It's fit with Manny. Okay. The app. Fit with Manny, the app, and that and everybody can download that, right? Android users and iPhone users. Yes, sir. Android and so, iPhone. So how's that working out for you? You got a lot of um, yeah, man. I just, members. I write down. I write down workouts mostly two weeks, and every two weeks I give you a workout for every month, and it's right now, there on the something... screen, easy, customized just so for is that, that person. Some... Is that something that you going live with them one on one, or is it like preset where they can see the workout that no, you're doing? No, they can see the workout. And... They can see the workout, and you see each workout is like timed, so they go on to the next workout. It's like a hit training, um, circuit yeah. training thing. You can do it at home. Oh, at the, you can do it at outside. You can do it at the gym. You can do it all. So you got the app going for you, and you're also a personal trainer, yeah, right? I'm also a personal personal trainer. Doing I am so back how, in Boston, yo. Yeah. So how's that going, man? With this old COVID thing, are, are you uh, it's, meeting it's, clients one on one, going, or out, is it... out here? It's, we're, we're finally getting to go outside, so everybody's outside at the park. So I do all my training outside too. That's dope, man. Yeah, so you was here, you was here in Miami for a while, right? You for were back a while, home. then I left. Dope, I got, man. I mean, I don't know. If I thrive out here, man. I make money out here. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like that's uh, that's wild, yeah, man. And it, how I is how different. is it up there huh? compared to Florida? How is it in, in, with the whole you know craziness going on? Oh still? man, we don't. I don't know. We we finally like could take our mask off outside. Okay. Yeah, bro. That was that was bad. Um. I don't know, man. It's just it's different. Being in Miami, you get this whole like conservative feel. Then you out here, you get like a kind of a liberal feel, and you just be like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just like I hate it both. So yeah. it's like little by little, man. Everybody's going back to normal, which I love to see. Like when the the Jacksonville fight, um, UFC 261 with Mazidov. Ah, uh, yeah. Like it was great seeing like fans back to have that feel, getting goosebumps. So it's like. And then seeing the Canelo fight, seeing the fans, it's like how much you we miss that. We miss that feeling of like, you know what I mean? Just the crowd, and hopefully people can have that in the basketball games and football games, and just like, just go back to normal again. Just people yeah, just and being happy. And I feel like that'll generate more money too. You know, oh, as yeah, far as course, like these yeah. events, um, because that day that Mazdavov fought, me and Danny was at a show in Kissimmee at a boxing event. Um, it was a top rank, um, on ESPN. And that place was, it wasn't packed to capacity, but there was a lot of people there, man. It was a lot of, a lot of folks there watching fights. So I think you're right, man. I think people are just excited. They just want to get out there and, and you know, watch fights or games uh, and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I, I, hopefully they start opening up soon. They started opening up for baseball. Um, don't know what, what the limits on the, the crowds are, but I know they started opening up for, for baseball. But my man Danny, you was over there in Texas, man. Like, you saw Tyson Fury, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How was that whole energy over there, man? All right. So, so I was at the weigh-in, right? And um, I was filming the weigh-in. I was um, Canelo was weighing in with uh, Billy, and um, all of a sudden you hear like a rumble in the crowd, and like Tyson Fury, maybe like like six feet away from me, actually walked by me, and I paused my recording. And I was like trying to get a picture, but he was like storming through the crowd, everyone attacking him. Um, so the way that I got the picture was. I had left uh, the way in and um, I wanted to buy one of those Canelo things that you tie on your head that says Canelo, like the headbands. 
Yeah, yeah. So I was I was holding up traffic and they were like honking at me. So I, I drove off. I, I I made a U turn and when I made a U turn, here comes Tyson Fury crossing the street, like just with like a mob of crowd just surrounding him and uh, they're waiting for him on his SUV. So I waited till that passed. I passed. I made a U turn. I got the Canelo things. Um, and then when I pulled up at the light, it was sure enough, it was him in the car. And I just kind of like honked and I was like, yo, let me get a picture. He, you know, he pulled his window down. He's like, of course, champ. And he, you know, gave me the whole face and put his, uh, his Versace glasses on. And he's, bro, he's, he's larger than life. Like his aura yeah. is crazy. And, um, and one thing he is a people person, bro. He was interacting with all the fans. He was hugging them, taking pictures. So it was great to see. You know the heavyweight champion, the the lineal champion of the world. Yeah. Um, and to to be able to you know be at the red light and get that picture, you know that's a pretty epic moment. That's it. Someone that's had dope. met Muhammad Ali, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's dope, man. You know, I guess the question is, you know, Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua, Manny, how do you, how do you see that going? I got, I got Fury. I got Fury, any any bro. specific any specific prediction? Twelve well, man, round decision. Just, um, Tyson Fury got way better defense than Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, he's a he's a he's a big puncher, but I feel like he's a lot slower than Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is a pure boxer with head movement and he got counter punches. And Anthony Joshua, you can just tell off his all of his fights, he always takes punches, and he takes big punches. And um, I just see Tyson Fury just outboxing him for sure. Danny, bro, jo Anthony Joshua is just an inflated supermodel. Like, let's be real. Yeah, like. Like I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna say it in my, in my boy's uh, best words. He's a big dozer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, I guess you got Tyson Fury. Any, any oh, you think Tyson no Fury gets him out ain't of no, there? Ain't no heavyweight right now that can compete with, uh, with Tyson Fury. Right now, he's, a, he's the best heavyweight, and I see it. He's a pure boxer. He moves beautiful around the ring, and, and you know, and also to see his comeback story. He has a beautiful comeback story. You yeah, know, he, he was. He, he went to, 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 to the top, you know, hit the bottom, and then he's right back up there. And um, I think that he actually stops um, Anthony Joshua six, seven rounds. I see that. Anthony too. Joshua, yeah, I, I, he doesn't have a chin. Yeah, I, I, can see, I can see him um, wearing him down and getting a TKO finish later in the later rounds. But he got to survive the first three rounds, though. He got to survive the first three rounds. Yeah, he's a, he's an out, he's an Tyson gets cracked. Tyson gets cracked too. Yeah, he gets but, cracked he gets too up, but, but he gets up. He gets yeah, he up. Yo, yo, a, hey, yo he got listen, up. Listen. Don't, let, don't let Wilder like learn how to box. If once Wilder learns how to box, man, that he's gonna be a problem. Like you, nah. you think, it, Danny? You, <laughs> Danny, you think it's too late for for Wilder? for Wilder to have a a second career? Um, oh, yeah, bounce back with he's, better he's, boxing skills. I mean, yeah, if you know he. Look, in order to be a uh, uh, to, to to achieve greatness, you always got to reinvent yourself, and that's what uh, like top uh, athletes do. That you reinvent yourself. So if he goes on that journey and he you know tries to per perfect his craft, he's a big name, I, I, and he has a, a a thing that you know that's hard to get in his natural punching power. He has that equalizer. Yeah. If he learns how to you know you know move and not get hit. He, I, I could see um, him dangerous, but I don't see him being Tyson Fury. But he, he's still a big name, and he'll be a big draw. I think uh, he should fight Andy Ruiz next, unless Andy Ruiz is going to go ahead and fight uh, Luis Ortiz. That's going to yeah, be yeah. I think wild, that I, that's, a, that's a wild looking fight, man. See, Wilder's so big and Ruiz so like small, and um, Wilder's lanky. He's like his length is crazy. He can smack you from across <clears> the table. So imagine, man, it's. And um, Luis got shorter arms, so he's gonna have to fight inside. And I don't. That's that would be his a good cardio, fight, is, man. But yeah, his cardio is off the charts, man. But uh, if you look at Wilder's, he's been he got a new camp, like got a new yeah. trainer. He's actually on the mitts, man. He's looking good on the mitts. I mean, that's compared to what he was before. What Logan. you was gonna say? Yeah, that's on the mitts. Mitts don't hit back. Yeah, exactly. What do you think? Um, how about you, Danny? What you were gonna say? Um, I, I don't know if the Wilder Reeves fight is gonna be next. Um, I think it it will be more um. Uh, Ruiz and, and Ortiz. Yeah, um, I think so. Too. I see that fight happening. Um, I won't be surprised if you see an Areola rematch. You know, being oh, yeah. both first September, maybe you know two big heavyweights. You know, fighting in in, in September. That's you they know can make, it could be. They, they can make Wilder versus Areola too. 
Why not? Yeah. Yeah. No, they fought already. I think uh, Wilder knocked him out. Um. So, but um. And there's the other I, dude. I, I, the other dude from from the UK. The heavyweight from the UK. I think he's from the UK. Dylan Dylan White. Oh, I like that guy. He's pretty good. You know who I really like, man. That is a good fighter, and he just gets a uh, bad breaks. Uh, Derek Chisora. If, if, um, he's he's a, you know he's a journeyman um heavyweight, but he's fought all the guys, and he's a good guy. He, um. But I think you're also uh, talking about Daniel Du Bois. Du Bois, yeah, he's another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. I don't know. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. But um, yeah, maybe, I mean, that was for for a long time it was asleep, and now you got a lot of talent coming in, and yeah. and a lot of these fighters. So the heavyweight division is definitely on fire right now, and and we'll see what happens. But um, at the end of the day, I think Tyson Fury will be the undisputed champion of the world again. I think so too, man. He has all. He, he seems motivated, and you just can't figure him out, dude. It's like fighting a, a, a lightweight, but he's a heavyweight. He doesn't stay. Doesn't stay still. But yo, man, I don't want to keep you guys up. I got First one time last ever. question though. One last question. Who Go ahead. Y'all got? You got Logan Paul or Mayweather? Come on, <laughs> man. Cut this is that's gonna be the snippet hey. right there, yo. Come on, hey, man. Don't, don't even. Don't, man, don't even. Tu- don't even tune it. into that it, shit, bro. I hate it. That's why, man. Bro. I mean. But how do you, yo, Dave, I got to ask you, though, how you how you feel about them? Because they said they're good for, people said they're good for boxing. So are you, do, do you believe the Logan, the Logan brothers are good for boxing right now? I think they're creating their own, their own uh, avenue in boxing. So this is like a sideshow. Remember Butterbean used to fight before the big events? So this yeah. is just a, this is just a better version of Butterbean. You know, um, Jake Paul is a young guy um, from what I see on social media. It seems like he trains. Seems he wants to learn. Seems he wants to be a boxer. Yeah. Um, so I'll give him that benefit of the doubt. Um, but listen, he's I, I can't knock him for, for using his uh, network and using, uh, you know, what, what God gave him, the ability to have followers and stuff like that and turn around and make money off it. I can't, can't knock him for that. So it's good for boxing because at the end of the day, um, it's exposing the, the fight game. Like more of... Uh, in, in the sense that it's getting out there, it's getting on more uh, different uh, streams of channels. Um, but he does not compete with the elite fighters of that oh. weight class at all. Like, tell me a cruiserweight. Do you, you think he's going to beat Alexander Uzek? He's going to beat uh, Jonel Dorticos? <laughs> like, come yeah. on. But he is a good sideshow. He is good for money. And, you know, let him do his thing. I ain't knocking him. You know what? And to piggy, uh, piggyback off of that, you know, you can't knock his hustle. You know, he's doing the right thing. He's fighting guys that he knows he can beat. Guys that never even boxed before. And it, it sucks for guys like me and, and you, Manny, too. You love MMA. Yeah. You know, he's beating these guys that he knows who, who he's going to fight. He's fighting like wrestlers and stuff like that, like basketball players. So he's making millions doing that. If I was in his position, I'd do the same shit. I'd do the same thing every two months if I was in his position. Every two months. You, I get paid a million dollars every two months to whoop these guys that never boxed before when I'm boxing, training every single day. And I'm in tip-top shape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the, yo, you know what? It's good. The exhibition fight is going to be an exhibition fight. It, um, you know how it is. It's this a, contracts. It's a, celebrity, it's, a, it's a celebrity match, right? You have celebrities going in there with other celebrities, but it's a selfish cele- charity. You know what I yeah. mean? Like they're getting yeah. it for themselves. You know how you have celebrity matches and all the money goes to charity, but they're doing yeah. they're doing a selfish they're charity for it. them. So and then a lot of young people are watching this shit. You know what I'm are. saying? But you know the only good thing, and if you look at it a positive note, like I do, I look at it like this: there's kids that that like that kid because he's still compared to man. We old y'all. Yo, we <laughs> yeah, old. it's true. Yo, no, we it's fucking true. old, man. It's true. So hey, by the way, kid, by the way, I've been standing up the whole podcast. <laughs> 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 Yo, so this is a if, if anybody out there that watches this shit, take this positive positivity. If you're a fight fan for real, if you're a fight fan for real, there's kids out there that are watching this. Maybe they get motivated. And when they watching this, they're like, man, boxing is cool. Let me Google boxing. Let me YouTube boxing. And then they fucking go down a rabbit hole and then they come across Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, all these legends, and then you never know, man, that could spark up the next great thing in, you know, 10, 15 years because of that idiot. So that's the, that's the way that I look at it. Like, okay, cool. He's bringing a lot of noise to boxing. A lot of people that don't know shit about boxing are watching other than Canelo and Mayweather, right? And he's bringing, hopefully there's a kid that he could inspire to fucking 
go to the boxing gym and learn how to box and be the next best thing. And then he'll realize, damn, that guy, Jake Paul's a fucking idiot. Or Logan Paul, man, yeah, those guys I hope, suck. I hope okay. so. Or if not, we're going to get a more more um, obnoxious, annoying boxer who likes to do pranks and who talks a lot and does yeah crazy things. You know what I mean? Starts throwing pies yeah. at the face off. Like, you know, like you're going to yeah. be like, what, what are you doing? I'll be looking the results the next day after he fights. And if whatever happens with Jake, unless Jake Paul fights a credible guy. Tommy Fury. I'm I'll, not I'll watching watch that one. I'm not watching that. But if, <laughs> he's not going to fight a credible guy. So he's you Tyson Fury's brother. If he fights him, I'll, I'll watch it. Yeah, Tommy I saw Fury. that. Yeah. He said he's going to show up. He said yeah. he's going to pull up to his gym. Uh, if, and if that's the only fight I'll watch. I'm because like, Tommy Fury, he's probably, he's he's a boxer. He's not, you know, the greatest, but he's an up and coming 4-0 oh, five, or 5-0 five and, oh, and he's a good. That's perfect. That's a good match. They don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want them, that. I'm not he taking that he fight. He doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, Jake Paul my man's fat, short guy, so, you know. <laughs> Thanks for giving me the time, y'all. The first time that uh, I had two other fucking guests on the Unprofessional Breakdown. So, and the first time that I get, um, how do you, I don't, I don't want to say it without saying pause right after. Uh, the first people to <laughs> return, the first people to return to the show. Oh, yeah. Right? Because um, <laughs> you guys were early on on, on my little show here. Um, my man, Manny Sanchez. Y'all can find him on Instagram, right? What's your Instagram, yeah, Manny? Fit with Manny Inc. I should have done, done it like Danny over here. Yeah, man. I tell I, You know what? I don't tell people what to put whenever they put the name. I figure they put their Instagram or their social media. But uh, it's, uh, it. fit, it's fit with Manny underscore Inc., right? Yeah, fit with Manny Inc. I okay, fit with Manny Inc. And I'll put it on, on here. And then uh, my man Danny, where can we find you? Uh, right there, D, D plus Aris underscore. Yes, sir. All right, man. And yo. Great talk. I loved it. I've got to edit a bunch of shit on this. Good night, y'all. All right, All right good night.